Creating object in Zmax. For creating objects in Zmax, we have two options. One is to make it by a CAD model and import it into Zmax. The other one is to make our own polygon object in Zmax, even without any CAD program. And there is another option that you know you can do part designing in Zmax. But right now, I want to talk about how we can make our polygon object directly in Zmax. So polygon objects in optics, we have a lot of objects that uh, they're, they're like polygon objects like a rhomboid is one of them that the beam is coming from the bottom and then we have tr uh, translation of the beam and then because of two total internal reflection the beam is going out from the top now we want to make this kind of optics in zmax just as an example that we can extend this kind of example to different polygon objects so the whole purpose of this video is to understand the basics and how we can actually make it. So let's say we have a rhomboid that the dimensions is 10 by 10 by 60. So it means that this dimension is 10, this one is 10, and the height is 60. When you look at it from the side, this dimension is 10, from here to here is 10, from this actually edge to this edge, is 60 and when you rotate it again from here to here is 10 so it's uh, from when you look at it from the top it's like a uh, square shape object so now let's put a random coordinate but usually the propagation of the beam is in z direction for zmax but right now let's just start with a because you can rotate your object you can change the position you can do but first you need to make your polygon object so this is my x direction this is my y direction and this is z direction this is my poly polygon object so first the first step for each vertex you put a number or name for yourself so right now for the back side i'm gonna put v1 v2 v3 v4 all of them are on the back side and the front side that i'm moving in y direction is v5 v6 v7 and v8 and this is xz coordinate so when you look at it from the top you can see v1 v2 v3 v4 that's and based on what i mentioned before the dimension is 60 by 10. now let's see what are the coordinates it's pretty simple for each a vertex you need to have a coordinate so v1 i'm gonna put 0 0 0 because x is 0 z is 0 and y is also 0 so i'm gonna put v 0 0 for v2 which is vertex 2 the only thing that is different from v1 is that i move in x direction so x is 60 which is the height the rest y is 0 and z is 0 then for v3 the only difference from this vertex 2 to vertex 3 is that i move in z direction and in x direction so both of the coordinate i need to add 10 to them so for v2 x we're gonna add 10 y is 0 for all of them and z we're gonna add 10 so we are here for v4 the main difference between v1 and v4 is that we move in z direction and we move in x direction 10 and 10 so v4 is 10 0 10 now for v5 v6 v7 v8 everything is gonna be the same just in y direction we move by 10 millimeter so we can have all the coordinates and we put 10 for y so right now i have all my coordinates you can do it in like uh, any spreadsheet software like Excel or even you can put in a piece of paper so the first step you need to understand your vertices so that's all my vertices and the coordinate the second step you can actually put a name for each phase so for me this is optional because the beam is coming from this direction I'm gonna call this surface front surface so for the front surface when you rotate it you should do it in your mind and you know rotate it you need to have a 3d dimensional imagination when you rotate it v5 
and uh, V6 is in, is here. And then on the back side, we have V1, V2, V3, V4. So V1 and V2 are on the on on the other side. So when you look when you look at it from the back side, you should see V1, V2, V6, V5 for the front surface. So pretty simple. Now the back surface because this is front, this is the back. When you look at it from this side, we have V8 and V7 that we can see it, and on the back we have V3 and V4. So that's for the back side. Now the bottom side when you rotate it which is this side when you rotate it you have v5 and v8 that we can see it here we have v1 and v4 from the other side because on the back side of v5 is v1 and then for the top surface when you rotate it you can see we have v6 v7 v2 and v3 so that's all the surfaces that I have. The, because this is the front surface, so my right hand side is this surface that is obvious, V5, V6, V7, V8. We have those. And then for the left surface, which is the surface that I cannot see it right now, which is on the back side, the left surface, if you flip it, you can see the the vertices are V1, V2, V3, V4. Now keep those in your mind. In the next slide, we're gonna talk about Zmax polygon object, how we can actually use codings for polygon objects. So in Zmax, for vertices, we put V, number, X, Y, Z. So for example, here, my vertex number one, we put V space one and the coordinate zero space zero zero. So that's V one. And then do the same from the spreadsheet. If you can write your own code also, V two, V three, V four, V five. And then for V eight, which is the last one as an example, we have 10, 10, 10 for the coordinate. 10 is X. Actually, I explained it before and this is spreadsheet so you just put those numbers and v1 v2 v3 v space the number and then you know three spaces with coordinate x y z so that was for my vertices now from these vertices we want to make our faces actually but for faces we have some rules we only have two kind of faces in zmax polygon object we can have triangular shape or we can have rectangular shape. So for triangular shape, because triangle starts with T, the code is T space vertex one, vertex two, vertex three, that's a random number. And we have is reflective face that I'm gonna explain what are those. But the important part is those numbers that we put. And then for R, because it's a rectangle shape, R because it started with R, rectangular start with R. We have vertex one, two, three, four. V is one, V two, V three, V four, and is ref, is reflective face that I'm gonna explain what are those. So for is reflective, you can actually put zero, which means that that surface is refractive, like a surface of glass that the beam is going into that surface. If you put one. It means that the surface is reflective, so it's going to reflect the, the light based on the law of reflection. And if you put negative 1, it means that that surface is absorbing. So negative 1 means the power goes to 0. So connecting the vertices, we have a rule for that. You can go in any direction. You can go to the right, to the left, but you cannot do the cross. So V1 v2, v3, v4, and again v1, that's correct. So that's very good. You can start with v4, you can say 4, 1, 2, 3. This one is also very good. But you cannot do cross like this. You cannot go from v1, v3, v4, v2. So the software cannot understand that kind of mistake. So error, it's not gonna work. So that was the 
basics of how we can do it, how we can actually make our spreadsheet or a code for Zmax. The next video, we're going to do it in Zmax with a practical example.